Hello and welcome, this is Melskinner, and we're back with some more Battletech. In the last video, I completed the first mission with our new mercenary company, and now we're en route to do the first contract that I have selected. And in the interim, we've also been doing some things with the management of our mech company, but at the moment, I'd like to continue with the conversation with Darius before we move on to those other management tasks. So... We already asked about our debt situation. Uh, let's go ahead and ask him some questions about running the company themselves. Maybe he has some advice for us. Sure thing, Mouse Gunner. I'd be happy to help. What do you need to know? Okay, well, we already did our contract, but... Let's see what happens here when I click this. Okay. Outfits like ours depend on the Mercenary Review Board to post certified contracts working for reliable employers. I say reliable, but let's face it, Mouse. Most jobs come down to us uh, doing the work that the rich and powerful can't be seen doing. Mercenaries are deniable assets. Travel from system to system, picking up jobs, and making ends meet. Sure, space travel costs sea bills, but some employers are desperate enough to pay travel expenses for mercenaries willing to make a few jumps for a gig, which is what our current contract had in its stipulation was that they were covering our uh, travel expense. Okay. What intel will I get about a contract before I accept it? Most employers will give us enough info to understand who we're fighting and why. Some are cager than others, but by and large, they want us to succeed. Because of this, we generally get enough intel to get the job done. It isn't a perfect system, but it works well enough. There are a few key things to look for in a contract. First, you need to understand what type of mission it is. Next, you should take account of the climate conditions in the area of operation, which I didn't really take a look at, but uh, we'll maybe see that in a second. Finally, it's important to know the expected strength of the opposing force, or OP4, vital even. Okay. Well, there's a lot here, but let's go over these things line by line. So, what are the types of missions we could get? In my experience, most contracts come down to one of more of a few basic ideas. Blowing something up, taking someone down, keeping some something safe, or making a mess with heavy ordnance. There'll be variations here and there, sure, but for the most part, our jobs are going to fit into one of these categories. Giant bipedal weapon platforms aren't exactly known for their subtlety. All right, tell me about climate conditions. So this one I can kind of guess myself, but if you're not watching the climate conditions, you're not in full command of the battlefield. In most environments, you've got you got to watch your mech warrior's weapons fire and jump jet use so they don't overheat their battle mechs. Badlands and deserts make your mechs run hotter, so you're going to want to pay careful attention when you're fighting there. Low atmosphere, non-terraform planets are worse. You'd be wise to swap out some energy weapons for ballistic weapons in those environments, or pack on some extra heat sinks. The vacuum of lunar environments is the worst. It's counterintuitive, I know. Space is cold, right? But no atmosphere means basically no heat dispersion, and you're sitting on top of a fusion reactor. Use your jump jets sparingly, or you'll be shut down in no time. Okay, I didn't actually expect that, but okay. All that being said, frozen environments are like heaven for our mech warriors. The heat from our weapons fire and jump jets dissipates at a much greater rate, and you'll have the maximum options on the battlefield. Okay, tell me more about mission difficulty. It's important to have an idea of what you'll be up against once your lance hits the ground. Unfortunately, mercenaries are often on the ass end of the mission intel, and the most we'll usually get is a rating of the enemy's overall strength. Best emissions difficulty rating will give us an idea of our post-mission repair bills and med bay time, or a signal that we should avoid the mission altogether until we can bring bigger guns. Okay. Let's go back a second. I think we just finish this little tutorial with the uh, the contracts, and then we'll we'll see about some other things. Can I withdraw from a contract? Absolutely. That's the great thing about being a merc. It isn't our fight. We're here to make money, not die for a cause. You can back out of a contract negotiations at any time with no harm done, but once we deploy onto a battlefield, it gets a little trickier. If things start going sideways during a mission, you can still withdraw to save on repair bills and med bay time, or med bay time but it may still cost us. 
Draw before achieving any objectives and destroying at least one enemy. The mercenary review board will rule on a bad, uh, get a bad faith withdrawal. Not only will we not get paid, we won't get any battlefield salvage either. Plus, our reputation will suffer both with our employer and with the MRB. That's pretty important to know. I'm glad I, I read that part. Now we withdraw after achieving an objective and destroying at least one enemy. Then the board will rule in a good it a good faith withdrawal. Our, our pay will still be reduced, but our reputation won't take a hit. And that's important for business. All right, so deploy, I mean, when you deploy, destroy at least something, do at least one of your objectives, and you'll be all right. All right. Okay, tell me about reputation. Oh, yeah, one last thing on the subject. If one of our of your mechs is getting banged up bad, and it looks like a mech warrior may not make it out alive, you can order them to eject during combat. The Meyer will fly suborbital and recover them, and will scoop up their mech after the mission. Hey, tell me about reputation. A mercenary outfit outfit's reputation determines the quality of the contracts we were offered. The quality of the mech warriors willing to hire on with us and the deals we get on weapons, me uh, weapons, mechs, and equipment in local stores. Most employers won't offer us the really juicy contracts until we've proven ourselves over time, but once our rep is solid, we'll get access to some high-paying gigs with opportunities for some serious battlefield salvage. Why salvage is so important? Of course it's important because you get stuff. If sea bills are like blood, salvage is like food for a mercenary company. Or something like that. I don't really do analogies. Let's just say, uh, just let's just leave it at salvage is good. Here's why. <laughs> salvage lets you replace components you've lost. Or upgrade your mechs to better suit your combat tactics. If you don't end up needing the salvage you get, you can always sell it off at the nearest store. Salvage rights are a time-honored tradition in the mercenary trade, and figuring out who gets what at the end of an engagement is a vital part of our business. In addition to sea bills, most contracts will offer salvage reflecting a ratio like to 10. The first number represents how many profile priority salvage items we get to handpick after a battle. The second number is the total amount of salvage we'll get, subject to the whims of our employer. You, you can negotiate salvage rights for every mission you accept, so keep it in mind. Okay, um, how do we negotiate a contract? We already kind of did that, but mercenary contract negotiation is pretty straightforward. Out here in the periphery, it's all based on the Golden Triangle, sea bills, salvage, and reputation. Sea bills are the coin of the realm, so to speak. We use sea bills to pay for our travel expenses, upkeep on our ship, salaries for our crew, and repairs or refits of our mechs. Sea bills will keep us flying. Salvage part of our take two. The more salvage we take off the battlefield, the fewer sea bills are deposited in our account. The fewer sea bills we ask for, the more salvage we can get. Now, you may want to take less money and less salvage in order to increase our reputation with the party offering the contract. Yeah, it will cost us now, but the investment could really pay off later down the road. All right, well, that's, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, there's obviously a lot more tutorials here, um, but for now, we'll just move on because we do have the mission I'll see you. at hand. So... Let's go to our barracks and let's start playing around with the experience system. So we do have 2,600 experience, so let's level some things up. Now, one thing I'm not particularly happy with is that we only have two guts, so I'd like at least to get one more of those. Now, where I would want to go as a pilot really depends on what kind of mech we have. If we keep going with the blackjack that we currently have, well, then gunnery skill is going to be pretty important. And having multi-target ability would probably be fairly important for us, too. So I'm going to go ahead and up that. Now, with that being said, unless I got rid of Guts, I wouldn't be able to afford the skill. So I probably we're going to have to waive that for now. Having a sensor lock would probably be pretty important at some point. And uh, if I end up going with a lighter mech, which honestly, that is my preferred play style, uh, I would want to go piloting. I mean, honestly, everything here is going to be great. Uh, you know, here's where you get bulwark. There's a couple of skills here I'm not sure if I'm familiar with. I'm, I'm really familiar with breaching shot, and I really like that in a pilot that's going to be in the support role. As far as... Evasive movement, that's just going to give you more evasive, evasion charges. We have Ace Pilot. This unit can move after shooting if it has not moved yet. So that's one I'm not as familiar with because that wasn't really in the beta. 
And of course, you can always do an overview of what these things do. Uh, having base sprint distance would be pretty important, in my opinion. Sensor lock is really good, and Master Tactician is going to give you an initiative bonus. And then this, I think, I have not seen before. So Juggernaut, successful me melee attacks, knock your target back one initiative phase. Well, that's really good if you're going to do a lot of melee attacks. All right, so I can spend in one more thing, and... I think I'm going to go with piloting here. So I'm 4433 at the moment. So plus one on steady threshold now that I've upped that. Okay. Let's confirm. Training confirmed, Commander. Okay. So the next thing that we should do is just go through our other pilots. So this guy here. Oh, I'm noticing that there's a little symbols here. Let's see what they mean. So Commander. Okay. That makes sense. And recruit. So this guy has that same symbol, and then you have regular. Okay, I don't know at what point they, that, that switches over. It may be uh, how many points you have uh, deployed. Like, for example, with his amount of experience, we probably should be able to get um, things up. So here, we could get uh, evasive movement right now if we wanted to. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that. So confirm. And it says, confirming this ability selection is permanent. You may only have two primary abilities and one special ability. And mech warriors cannot be retrained. Re All right, let's confirm. Mech warrior training complete. And he can't afford anything else, so that's it for him. Commander? Okay, you have 800 points, uh, which I think we're going to go ahead and spend that on the piloting. We couldn't afford anything else, so we'll confirm. Training complete. Oh, uh, yeah, he did get uh, leveled up, too, by spending a point Standing there. By. Okay, and then you have 2,000 points, so what would we want from you? Um, uh, having a sensor lock would be very valuable, and he's uh, was our scout pilot anyway, so let's go ahead and have him do that, and then that's all he's going to be able to afford. And we get the same thing here. Training confirmed, Commander. Okay, and then you have 800 points, and you are bad on tactics. And tactics does what again? Let's remind ourselves. Uh, as the effectiveness is called shot opportunities, it also reduces the penalty for indirect fire and improves the minimum range of weaponry. Well, I mean, I might as well level that up so that it's, you know, at least to a baseline of three. So let's go ahead and do that. Mech warrior training. Now, as far as I understand, you can only deploy four mechs. So we have five pilots and five mechs, but I think we can only deploy four. I guess we'll find out when we get to our mission, but I'm fairly certain that is correct. So I'm going to have to decide on who to send to the mission. And which mechs to send to the mission as well. But for now, uh, this is fine. Uh, we have a backup mech in case uh, a mech and a backup pilot in case we need repairs or somebody gets hurt. So uh, that works for me. Uh, I think that's all I want to do for now. Let's just go ahead and uh, go on to the contract. So let's play through. Got a couple more days of travel. Oh, I did want to look at the star map and see what the planet is like. All right, we were arrived at Bellerophon, Commander. Ready to proceed with our current contract? Let's just say not yet, because I see there's a big launch contract button here. Uh, so the star map... Okay, so this is the planet that we're on. So it did it did say you should look at the planet. So I'm going to guess this is how you would see that information. Because I didn't see that in the contract unless it was there and I just missed it. All right, so recently liberated from mercenaries and religious fanatics. A lightly inhabited Bellerophon is arid and inhospitable. And conflicts over limited agric agricultural resources are common. So it's a got a bunch of attributes here. So it's a battlefield... Scavengers may have mech weapons and parts available for sale. Oh, okay, so that's going to probably dictate some of the things that are for sale. So ruins, the surface of the world includes ruins of earlier settlements, whether lost in succession wars or from uh, even earlier periods. Agricultural, so that's the kind of economy they have. Periphery level of civilization, a periphery level of technology, less advanced and more provincial than the inner sphere. Small population, okay. Arid world. The world is drier than Earth with desert and scrub land. Ah, so that's going to mean we're probably going to have problems with heat. And then medium gravity planets, so we don't have to worry about anything there. I don't know how gravity would affect things, but... Uh, okay, important to know. Let's go ahead and uh, go back here, and I guess we can start the mission itself. So, 
Let's go to that and launch contract. Now, this is where I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. And I also am curious of whether we're going to be able to squeeze another contract in here because we're not getting paid that much for this job and our expenses are well over what we are getting paid. So hopefully we can even squeeze another job in here uh, after this one. So uh, let's go ahead and launch the contract. I'm not going to buy anything or anything like that. Uh, I think we'll be able to do all right with what we've got. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four slots. Oh, that's cool. It gives you a lot of information here. So I think we run with the same squad we had last time. I could run with the Locust, but I honestly think the Spider is better. It's going to have the same speed. It's going to have less armor for sure, but I think that's the right call. So we're going to go with the, the Shadowhawk. And, oh, okay, we get to drag and where that goes. Okay. So. I think it'd be easier for me to keep track of things if I did it kind of in the order that it would deploy. So, or the initiative order. So we put that there. And then I want Decker so that we get that sensor lock. So go ahead and drag him there. So initiative four. Okay. And then... These guys should all go at the same time, so at this point, it doesn't really matter. So I will put uh, the my mech next. I think I'm just going to stay in the Blackjack for now. And honestly, I think I am the best pilot for that outside of Glitch, which we're probably going to keep in the Vindicator. Okay, and then the Shadowhawk. Which, honestly, I don't think Behemoth is the best uh, pilot for the Shadowhawk. Uh, the Shadowhawk I'm probably going to be using to punch and things because it's got a nice weight to it. I think I'm going to use Medusa instead. Uh, the main difference between the, the two is, is Guts, which Guts improves the maximum health of the warrior. It also reduces the penalty from weapon recoil and increases threshold of heat that triggers the overheated. But if we're punching, a lot of that won't matter. So let's go with Medusa here. And then uh, Glitch uh, will be the last one. We'll put her in the Vindicator. And we need a good gunnery for the Vindicator. So more or less, the Blackjack and the Vindicator can form in the fire support role. But the Blackjack is kind of a multi-purpose mech. It's, it's on the slow end for that, but... Okay, there we go. So tonnage is 175 tons. Did we have a limit for that? Or is that going to cost us a certain amount of money? I, I actually don't know. This is the total tonnage of the mechs currently assigned to the Lance. As a rule, the higher a contract difficulty rating, the more drop tonnage is recommended. Oh, okay, so that doesn't really matter. Maybe if you link these with that, you know, that's a little bit better. So, the biome is going to be desert. That may have been listed, and I just didn't read it. And then the mission is battle. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, deploy. All right, we're ready to go, and it looks like we get a reminder of what's going on for the mission and what have you. Begin the mission. Command interface initiated. All right, we've got them, Commander, right out in the open. These guys are amateurs. Get eyes on them, take them out. Good hunting, Commander. Oliviera, out. Okay, so this mission seems pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and have our spider, you know, come forward and be doing the scouting, more or less. Got it. Have the blackjack come in behind. I'm not going to worry too much. I was about to say I'm not going to worry too much about cover, but that's not true now. Okay, a little bit closer than I expected to see them. Trying to think of, of with line of sight, well, where would be the best place to move? Because we've got a ridge here. I guess I'll just move here for now. Um, the Shadowhawk. That's the only mech that we're aware of. I'm going to go ahead and move over this way. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with the Shadowhawk. Because I did set them up to be kind of up close and personal. And we may be able to get a good line of fire if I come up here and jump on top of the this ridge. So I'm going to go ahead and run over in that direction. We might even have line of sight here, but I doubt it. I mean, this is a pretty... Yeah, it's a lot steeper than it initially looked like it was going to be. Let's hit hard. 
Okay, here we go. So they have a light mech. May be able to close with me and actually attack, but we'll see. All right, did hit. That's unfortunate. Okay, so it looks like we've got another one of these kind of roughed up shoddy, so 50% of normal armor. Okay, so... I don't see any other enemy contacts here. I don't see a reason why not to have Decker move now. Good to go. Um, and probably what I'll do is try and get in behind cover. You know, somewhere, but within range of my sensors. Might even jump to do it. As long as my sensors are still in range. And then we'll do a sensor lock, because that would probably be the best move for us. Engaging jump jets. To get rid of these evasion charges. So, sensor lock. And it's good that we have that now. Locked on. Okay. And this uh, lights them up for our other members. Okay, so it's possible we don't have contacts with the rest of the enemy, which is why they're not on the initiative phase. Which is fine. Okay, so who do we want to have go next? Well, the Blackjack should already have targeting solution. Um, I think I'll move up. So we may be able to get the medium lasers in. No, not if I move there. But if I move here, I think that's just at the edge. And I could also use the, uh, the precision strike here. To really increase my accuracy. And we'll go after center torso, try and get that kill. And fire away. Alright, we tried. Oh, oh, I say we tried and we got the kill. There we go. Okay. Well, at the moment, I don't really know what we should do here. So let's just reserve... Uh, okay, it's possible there is no more enemy, so at this point, Receiving you. Uh, I'm going to move up on top of this ridge. Um, I'm going to sprint on top of the ridge here. Going full throttle. It should be a lance, so we'll see what we get with that, but we're not encountering anybody. And then Glitch is going to jump to get up on top of here. There's advantages to having height on your opponent. Um, and we'll face like that, because uh -huh. the one side is uh, the edge of the map, so there's no reason to look that way. Okay. Uh, and you can brace as well. Okay, there they are. I'm going to guess that's a light mech as well. I'm going to reserve for just this moment. Waiting for the shot. Okay. What's up, boss? Go ahead and just use his sensor lock again. This opponent should have decently moved. Okay, so what do we got? A commando, I'm guessing? Yeah. All right. We go here, we'll get a direct line of sight, so I think that's what I'm going to do. And let's fire away here. Um, we do have to worry a little bit about... Well, first off, this is not a very accurate shot, but just to make sure that he builds... I mean, it's not that bad, and honestly, Shadowhawks are really cool running mechs. We'll just fire away. Engage. All right, so now this guy has no evasion. For my other mechs to kind of open up here. What can I do for you? Um, you might as well just attack where you are. You're going to have good accuracy against him, so fire away. 
Okay. Took out some of his firepower, I'm sure. And then my blackjack, I'm going to move to here. And we're going to open up on this guy. Now, I'm going to heat up a bit because I'm, I'm continuing to fire all my weapons. But we should be able to handle it. We get some good hits here, which unfortunately we did miss quite a bit. We might have been able to take him out. Alright, so he's going to be able to respond, but he's taking pretty good damage. Okay. Fortunately, some of that missed. Damage minimal. Okay. So, at this point... Um... I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit on the offensive here. So we're going to run up over here and we're going to fire our, our lasers. Yeah, I could have sensor locked him and made him uh, a sitting duck, but we could do the same thing by just firing weapons at him. Reduce that evasion over time. And it would be nice to get these guys some experience with some, you know, trigger time. I don't know if, uh, you know, doing sensor locks gives you experience. I don't really know what gives you experience at all. Could just be in a, being in a mission. Okay, so we've done that. Aye, aye. I mean, eventually we would like to punch guys, but at the moment I just don't have the right positioning for it. We might as well stay on this guy's uh, side though, so that we can take him out more easily. And you know, this mech can do it from the right angle to do it as well. So let's do him first. Uh, we're going to turn off the uh, LRM5 and turn on the SRM2. And fire. Confirmed. Okay, let's go. Okay, got the kill. Target eliminated. Milk run, just as we expected. Good work, Commander. All right, that wasn't really so much a lance as it was just two light mechs. Mission successful. All right, nice and easy and quick. All right, here we are with the mission report. Your performance was exemplary, Commander. I'll ensure that the Magistracy High Command hears about your skills. So we successfully did this. We get the pay. Uh, we have maybe a little bit of rep here. It says one, so I don't know if that's improved or not. And our MRB board uh, rating has upped because we were at 15. Now we're up to 20. And uh, morale, I don't know if that's changed. Move on. Okay, we didn't really take much in the way of damage, so nothing really to worry about here. Nobody got injured, so we're good there as well. And we got a couple kills divided amongst our guys. All right, so salvage agreement. Okay, so we can't move that bar. Just checking. Okay, so it's up to me. Uh, I could get a Locust 1M. That's a variant that I do not have. It is going to have LRMs, which we could always swap around if we wanted to. I personally would prefer to run this, perhaps, as my my scout. There's advantages and disadvantages of doing that, of course. And then the commando, which I really do like the commando. Um, which variant is it? I think this is the normal variant with the... Yeah, it is, I think. So this is really good in the uh, fire uh, firepower standpoint. So... We also have LRM-5s, medium laser, and SRM ammo. Now, I don't know if you're going to get any weaponry with the commando. I'm going to assume not. Um, but we get to pick one item. So let's pick the commando. That's what I think I want. Okay, let's uh, confirm that. Okay, so we got the Locust. We got uh, the two... LRM fives. I mean, that was pretty much everything, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we got everything that, that we could have gotten anyway. So that's fine. Um, let's uh, continue. Now, I don't know if we had enough bays to add in all of these mechs. So I may need to sell one off. Well, I guess we'll see here in a second. All right, we're back. And let's see if we can figure this thing out with the mech bay with these new mechs. So... They aren't listed here, but in storage, yeah, there they are. So, if we click on one of these, a little exclamation point, let's see if that has a thing. Okay, unfieldable. This mech is unfit for combat and cannot be sent on missions. 
may be due to the destroyed location that need replacement or a lack of un uh, usable weapons. To make this mech combat ready, refit or repair it via the mech bay. Okay. We have a slot here. How do I how do I use it? Not sure how I use that. So, uh, because I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, because uh, I don't have like any interface button, I, I see with these other mechs that there's some buttons here, so I can scrap or I can uh, send this mech to storage. But I mean, we already have an open slot, so I don't think I would need to do that. So, I'm not really sure. So let's uh, let's talk to uh, Yang and see if he has anything to say. Okay. Um, I have a few questions about the mech bay. I think that's that's probably what we want to do. So let's ask. Yeah, then hit me with them. I'll do what I can to answer. I mean, I don't want to wax poetic or nothing, but the mech bay is where the magic happens, boss. It's the beating heart of a mercenary outfit. Okay. Um. I repair mech damage after battle. I've already done that. What if I want to change a mech's loadout? Can I refit it? Uh, I think we should ask about storage, because that is uh, where the mechs are right now. So let's ask about that. Why well, use mech storage? A few reasons. First, we have limited capacity in the uh, mech bay, so we need to store the overstock for eventual sale or for use in the future. Second, we don't pay upkeep costs on mechs and storage. Oh, I didn't know that. That's a business thing, though, not my department. Third, and this is important, whenever we pick up partial mech salvage from the battlefield, I put it in storage for you. If we gather or buy enough partial mech salvage to complete a battle mech chassis... Oh, it might not be a complete mech. Okay. Uh, my team will assemble it right away. You let me know if you want to keep it in storage or have it readied for combat. Battle mechs are expensive as hell, so assembling one out of salvage is our best bet for expanding our roster. Hmm. Okay, I don't know 100% how that works. What happens when a mech goes into, uh, into or gets readied from storage? When you send a mech chassis into storage, our mech techs dismount all its weapons and equipment and place them in your inventory for use on other chassis. A chassis can stay in storage indefinitely. And don't worry about storage capacity. Boss, I'll make it fit. Don't you worry. Uh, getting a store battle mech ready for combat for combat drop is a different animal. My techs will need a couple of days to bring an empty chassis up from storage. Once the chassis is back in the mech bay, you'll need to select its loadout from our equipment inventory so we can get a start uh, and start a refit. The time and cost of a refit is dependent on the type and amount of equipment you choose. Okay, I don't know if that really answered my question 100%. Let's see if we can figure it out from that bit of information. The, the biggest problem I see is I didn't see an interface. Uh, Talk to you later. Or bringing it out of storage. I mean, maybe that's something we can't do yet. I mean, I've got buttons here. When I go to storage and I click on one of these guys. I mean, there's no button anywhere. Not that I see. So maybe that's something we can't do yet. Maybe it's part of the tutorial. I mean, it says parts one of three. So maybe I need all three parts to make it a full mech. Is there a tooltip for that? That could be it. I mean, maybe that's why we've salvaged the mech, so it's only enough to be a quote-unquote third of a mech. So, all right, so I guess we just have to wait on that. I mean, I could confirm it by sending it into storage, but then, uh, as this says, it strips out the weapons, and then uh, reapplying the weapons costs you time and money. So I don't want to cause cause me that just to, to see what happens when you put something in storage. So I'd rather not do that. Uh, I'm just going to make uh, the assumption that these are just, you know, we don't have enough parts to actually get one of these deployed. So maybe that's what this message means. So, all right. Well, in any case, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.